Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, today, um, I'm going to be answering some questions from the International A-Level Paper 4 Sample Assessment Paper. Um, at the time of making this video, the P4 exam um, has not had its first session, which is going to be sat in June 2020, we hope. Um, we've got this coronavirus going around the world right now, so we're not sure exactly um, about whether things are going to be postponed or whatever. Anyway, we're still going to prepare for the exam as if it's going to take place at the right time. Um, so we have the P4 uh, paper, which has not had an exam. So the only papers available, which are official from the examining board, are the sample assessment paper and the specimen paper. So I'm going to start with the sample assessment paper. The international A-level P4 um, syllabus seems to be very much similar in its content to the, uh, the old C4 syllabus. Um, except for an addition of uh, proof by contradiction and um, some of the integration has moved across to the P3. Um, in the old C3 there was no integration but I guess we're supposed to know that anyway for the P4. Um, so it's basically the same syllabus except for the introduction of um, the, the proof by contradiction. Okay so now first question binomial expansion. We are asked to find the expansion of this expression okay, in ascending powers of x up to including the term in x cubed using the binomial series. And um, we're told something here which I'm going to explain later on. The modulus of x is less than 2 fifths. We don't actually need that in this question in terms of um, you know, us using it to calculate anything. However, it's with something that we do need to understand. Maybe they might ask questions about you know, they might ask you for which, uh, which values of x is this expansion valid and they will, might not tell you this. So we do, that is part of the syllabus. So I will explain that at the end after I've expanded this just to make sure you understand that point. Now, <clears throat> to expand something like this, the first step is to write this as a numerator. We can't have this as a denominator. So what we have to do is we have to rewrite it using uh, the fact that 1 over a to the power of n is the same as a to the power of minus n. That's like one of the laws of indices that we should know uh, from basics. So this can be rewritten as uh, 2 plus 5x to the power of negative 3. That's the first step. Um, the second step is something which I was trying to warn many students about when they were doing P2 that you know using the NCR method okay, is well and good in P2. But when you come to P4, you will find negative and even fractional indices, in which case the NCR button in your calculator will not work. Okay, so what we have to know is how to do deal with this using the binomial expansion brackets, which we learnt. Uh, well, it wasn't in the P2 book, but I taught it in P2. And it's, in fact, even in the P2 uh, formula book that you get in your exam. But basically, when something's in the form 1 plus x to the power of something, and that n can be anything, it doesn't have to be an integer, positive or, uh, positive integer could be a negative integer, could be a, a fraction, okay, a non-integer. So here we have 1 plus x to the power of n. When you expand it, it will always be of the form of 1 plus n the power times x, which is whatever term is here, okay, plus... Then you have n times n minus 1. So you keep going down. The power keeps going down. So whatever this is, is 1 less than that over 2 factorial times whatever term is in here, including its sign. It's x squared plus, and it continues with the same pattern, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. Instead of 2 factorial, it becomes 3 factorial times whatever's in this place, x to the power of 3 Plus, and it continues on, 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 like that. Okay, so that's how we use the binomial expansion formula. So for us to be able to use this formula for this, I have to transform this, or I have to change this, so that it says 1 plus something x. Because this only works if there's a 1 here. So what we can do is we can take out the 2 as you know, kind of like a factor for that 2 there. So take out 2, you're left with 1. That's our objective to make this a 1. So it doesn't really matter what happens to the next thing as long as it gives us the, the same. The, this, this term doesn't have to be a whole number. It's the important thing is this has to be 1. So what does this term become when you've taken out 2? Well, you just divide it by 2. 
divided by whatever you took out. Okay, so if I took out 3, it would be 5 over 3. So I've taken out 2. 2 times 5 over 2 gives me 5. So that's what I want. 5 and x, of course, to the power of negative 3. And now I'm ready to use... Ah, sorry. All of this is the power of negative 3, sorry. The whole thing is the power of negative 3, including this 2 part. And now we can rewrite this as 2 to the power of minus 3 times 1 plus 5 over 2 x to the power of minus 3. And the reason we can do this is because... Again, from what we learned before, if you have two terms multiplied together, both um, raised to the same power inside this bracket, so a times b, all of it to the power of n, you can write this as a to the power of n times b to the power of n. You can, you can write them as separate terms, okay, multiplied with the same power. Okay, So that's what I've done. I've written this as 2 to the power of minus 3 times 1 plus 5 over 2x to the power of minus 3. So that now... It gives me 1 over 8, 2 to the power of minus 3 is 1 over 8, times, and now I can expand this bracket using this expansion. So you have 1 plus nx, so 1 plus, now n is the power, which is minus 3, times x, which is 5 over 2x. The x in this formula is whatever the x term is there. So this time it's positive, so it's positive 5 over 2x. Okay, that's the, up to the x term. We want up to the x cubed term, so we've got to continue. Plus n times n minus 1. So that's minus 3 times minus 4 over 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, times 5x over 2 to the power of 2. Okay, we're almost there now. Plus, you've got minus 3 times minus 4 times minus 5. n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over... 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2, okay, times 5x over 2, all to the power of 3, plus, and then dot, 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 okay, we stop there, only you have to go up to x cubed. So now, what I can do is I can get all of this stuff simplified, because we've got to express it as a fraction in simplest form. So let's get all of these things simplified before I multiply by 1 eighth. So I've got 1, and this is going to be minus times plus, which is minus. That's 15x over 2. Then minus times minus is plus, so I've got plus. And I have cancel, cancel. That'll be 6 times, that's going to be 25x squared over 4. Okay, 25x squared over 4. Then I have um, minus times minus times minus, which is minus. 3 cancels with the 3, 2 with the 4 gives you 2 there. So you'll end up with a 10, and you'll have times, and this will be 5 cubed, which is 125x cubed over 2 cubed, which is 8. Okay, so here we have our expansion. Um, not quite simplified yet, so continue. So you have 1 over 8 times. 1 minus 15x over 2. Let's just simplify this. This is 4 and this is 6. 2 goes into 4. 2 times into 6. 3 times. 3 times 25 is 75. So 75x squared over 2. Then you're going to have minus 8 and the 10. 4 and 5. 2 goes into both of them. And then you end up with... Uh, 5 times 125, which is 500 plus 125, which is 625. X cubed over 4. Okay. And now we can multiply by that 8. And we'll be done. So if you multiply by that 1, 8, sorry. You're left with 1 over 8 minus 15. X over 16 plus 75x squared over 16 again, minus 625x cubed over 4 eighths, which are 32. Plus dot dot dot, we don't need the rest. That is our answer to this question. We've expressed this up to and including the term in x cubed, and we've expressed um, each coefficient as a fraction to its simplest in its simplest form. Okay, so we've got to express this in its full form. Sometimes they say write down or you know um, expand and 
and write down the coefficient of x cubed or the coefficients of x squared and x cubed that you shouldn't write the x squared next to it just write the coefficient itself like so to find the coefficient of x cubed you say the coefficient of x cubed is minus 625 over 32 okay so be careful about that some students lost marks when they just wrote down the expansion and then didn't pick out what the coefficient of what they were asked to give was so they can be quite strict with that um, the other thing that i was going to mention to you Although we finished this question now, so that would, that's perfectly fine. Full marks uh, for this question, and there's no need to do anything else. However, for the purpose of your understanding, I want to explain what this means. Okay, so they've told us that basically that this expansion that we've got is only valid if the modulus of x, the absolute value of x, is less than two-fifths. Now, what does that mean? Well, what it means is, it means basically that this expansion here will only be true, will only give us an accurate um, answer if the value of this x here is less than two-fifths. If it's more than two-fifths, then it won't be an accurate um, expansion. And the reason for that is as follows. Let me explain now. This is called a infinite expansion. Okay. Whenever you have a negative integer or a fraction, or any fraction, even positive, you will always get something which will never end when you try to expand in using the binomial expansion. Because you have this n, then n minus 1, then n minus 1 times n minus 2, and it can continue. So, for example, if n is positive 3, when you got to the next term, the next term would be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3. Now, n minus 3, if, if n is 3, would become 0. And so would the term after that, because you'll have... 3 times 2 times 1 times 0 times minus 1, you'll have a 0 in all the other terms after that. So it will stop at the x cubed term. There will be no other term after it. But this doesn't stop. It continues on. If it continued on, you'll have minus 3 times minus 4 times minus 5 times minus 6 and so on and so on and so on. Continue on and on. So it has to, um, basically this is called an infinite expansion. So when you write down its expansion, you can never write down, you know, all the terms of it, of course, because it's infinite. So you have to only you have to stop somewhere. So we stopped here at x cubed. So this is not going to be exactly the same as this. There's going to be something missing from it. But if the value that goes inside this bracket here, if the value that goes inside this bracket right here is um, less than one, okay, then as you square it and you cube it and you raise it to the power of four and raise it to the power of six and eight and ten, it's going to get so small that it's going to be insignificant. So therefore, um, if, it's, if the value of this, whatever goes into this place, is less than 1, then the expansion will be fine because anything more than that, for example, if x was 0 0.1, then this would be 0 0.1. Over here, it would be 7, 75 or 60 times 0 0.01. There will be 0 0.001. Then it's going to get 0 0.0001. It's going to get so small, the value of these terms is going to get so small that they will not add much to the value that we got up to here okay so as long as the value of this whatever goes inside here is less than one the expansion can be considered to be a valid expansion and we'll give you a proper approximation if you use it to approximate so so if five if the modulus of five x over two is less than one then this is going to be a valid expansion so this is sometimes sometimes they might ask for which values of x, or find the range of values of x for which this expansion is valid, which they didn't ask in this question, but just in case they do, then what you do is you say, okay, that means 5 over 2 times the modulus of x is less than 1. That means the modulus of x is less than 2 over 5. Okay, so if they said, for example, find the range of values, you'd say, oh, that's x between minus 2 fifths and positive 2 fifths. That's the range of values of x for which this will be a valid expansion. Okay, as I mentioned, this is not actually part of the question. There was no need for me to mention that here, except for me to um, help you understand in case there's questions that do ask you that. Okay, so there's the uh, end of question one.